So here at Joy While We Sorrow, we have a relatively small community. We are um, no more at the very most than probably 90 people. And for as small as we are, I have really found my spiritual home here. I've really found myself in relationship with these people. The thing that strikes me most about it is how genuine everybody is. You know, it, it even feels kind of false to talk about it in such a way because, you know, it feels like I'm a used car salesman or I'm advertising and it's so utterly contrary to the, the spirit of this place, my spiritual home, you know. Uh, I have never in my life met, uh, by and large, such genuine people. You know, so they, uh, many of the people here, they, they don't, they're not, you know, kind of on with what's hip and what's going on in the pop culture around us, you know, and they don't despise it. They don't really have any opinion about it. They're just themselves. <laughs> and they, they are not even aware of how precious that is. And so when I first came here, it was almost, it was very, it was almost challenging because all the stuff you feel like you have to do to impress people or put your best foot forward or be on your best behavior or all the stuff you think you have to do, especially for people who are really religious, you don't have to do. You can be totally yourself in our community. And we're called Joy of All Who Sorrow. And that's another name for the Mother of God, right? Joy of All Who Sorrow. And there are lots of people sorrowing right? And uh, there are not, just like St. Paul says, there are not many rich, there are not many famous, there are, there are not many externally impressive things uh, with the people here, but they, they care about you. They, it's just natural to them to do that. And even though it is a segue from the world, you know, around us, you know, putting your best foot forward, if you let it, if you just stand in the peace that's there, then it is so consoling. Uh, these people, they really put their money where their mouth is. They, they love Jesus Christ. Uh, they're, they're humble. We have uh, a small community of nuns that all they do is, is pray. You know, that's what monastics do. They dedicate themselves to prayer. They choose to attend our church. I, I find that to be a great blessing for us. Um, we, we have a pastor who has never taken a paycheck <laughs> and yet he gives his life's blood for all of us, you know, and um, that really kind of sets the tone for, for our experience. You know, we put on a lot of festivals. We have a Christmas market and we, we do caroling and, you know, we do an Oktoberfest and we, we try to bring cheer in a non-confrontational non-showy way, just a warm, sincere way of bringing cheer to the world, of bringing joy to the world, which is after all what the world most needs, a world that is deeply in sorrow, to show that in the midst of our sorrow we, we really can have joy. We don't need anything but each other and the Lord God. And uh, it's really, I've had kids from the high school come on, on tours and they're like, some of them are almost afraid of the sanctuary because they perceive that something is there. And that something is, is really the presence of Jesus Christ in his fullness. Glory be to God.